guys, what's up? It's Marissa, and today I am back with another story time, and I feel like I haven't done a story time in forever. It's been like four videos, but like, feels like forever. And I literally miss it so much, like story time is bae. So I'm back with another one today about the time I committed fraud. Yeah. So before we get into the video, if you're not subscribed, what are you doing with life? Please hit that subscribe button. Come join my family. We just hit 20k like a week ago, I believe. And it is so amazing to hit that milestone with you. So I want you all to join my family. If you guys aren't already following me on my social media, I will all be linked down below to my Instagram, Snapchat, you now. We can live stream together, get to know each other better, and see more of my day-to-day -day life. I want to say one more thing. Oh my god, I got a P.O. box, guys. You can finally send me like letters, anything you want, like anything you've ever wanted me to read and see, um, you can send it to me in my P.O. box. I, I will put like a little text entry of the address right here. But yeah, I'm so, so excited. I can't wait to read all of the stuff you guys send me. I'm going to be doing videos of me opening all the stuff I get in my P.O. box with you so you can see my reaction live. But um, yeah, other than that, I'm going to stop rambling and get on to this crazy story time. Okay, so this happened February because I have the text literally last month was hell for me I snapchatted about it So that's another reason why you should follow me on snapchat because you will hear it first But um, I said I couldn't really legally talk about it, but now I can because it's done with and um, Fuck those people. Okay, so basically I just got off of work. It was like a Thursday night um, About 730 ish and I was driving home. I was so tired and so done with life You know when you just get off work some days and you are done with life like literally that's how I was feeling like I just want to go home, be a hermit crab by myself, and just like watch Shameless because like I love that show. Like excited to go home, and I was gonna go into Ralph's before I went home to pick up some groceries for the morning. And I'm by the light where you turn into Ralph's, and I'm at a stoplight, completely stopped, like wasn't on my phone doing anything crazy, and some guy hits me. My face, literally. This was the first time I've ever been in a car accident, so I didn't even know what it was at first. Like, it had to register because, like, dumbass, I don't know. I go out the window, and it's, like, this huge fucking guy. Like, like 6'2", like, 200 pounds, big guy. I'm like, oh, shit. So I was like, hey, like, do you want to just pull into the Ralph's parking lot? It'll be easier to get our information and whatnot so we're not in the middle of the street. And... <laughs> This is where the bullshit starts already. He tells me, no, I can't stop. I'm on my way to work. And I was like, sorry to inconvenience you, but you hit me and your ass is stopping. I didn't say that because I'm like polite, but um, in that realm. And so we pull over. It's like dark at night, so I can't fully see my car. And my car is a lease, so bitch isn't trying to pay for damages. I said, you know what? I see a scratch and I feel like a little bubble on my car, but I can't see it completely. Let's just exchange information and um, I will let you know in the morning when I can see in light and I'll take it to the dealership and see the estimate or whatnot. And he's like, okay, well, I don't really see anything. I was like, well, I'll let you know tomorrow. Like, just give me your information. So he gives me his information. I go to the dealership the next day. Unfortunately, with my car, which is so annoying, is um, if there, it doesn't matter if the dent is this big or the entire bumper, you have to remove the whole bumper out to fix any damages on the bumper, which sucks. How many times did I say bumper in that sentence, though? They estimate it. They said it's going to be $610 for the repairs. Um, I had all the paper. I had a written preliminary estimate. It was still preliminary because I didn't know if they took his insurance there or not. So I call him after that. And I said, well, I'm open to not going through insurance if you don't want to. Because I know, like... <sighs> The deductible is like $1,000, you have to like report it to the DMV, if it's over $500 you get a point on your driver's license and you know what, I'm not, I'm trying to be a nice ass bitch and like not try to inconvenience someone so much. He goes, okay, like it would be great to not go through insurance, um, I have like a $1,000 premium or whatever. And I was like, yeah, like that's fine, like if you can just send me a check, I'll give you an address and just send me the check and that'll be your proof of receipt and we'll be done with this. He goes, okay, cool. Everything was good. Then I get a phone call about an hour or two after I got off the phone with this guy. I guess it was his wife and she was calling saying that she would feel more comfortable if we can go to the dealership and she can pay for it there. And I also told her that, you know, I didn't even think about it. I got off the phone with my stepdad and I'm going to need a car because I 
work and go to school and I'm gonna need a car to get around during the week to a week and a half that the repairs were estimated. And she goes, oh yeah, like I didn't think about that either. Like we can inquire about a rental car for you when we're there tomorrow. I said, yeah, like that's fine because I never got in a car accident before and I didn't really know the proper measures and whatever to go about it. I talked to my stepdad about it later that night and he told me that basically like not to do it, that she's just gonna jerk me around and say that they didn't do this, they didn't do that, and it's just gonna be a lot more complicated. So I texted her and I told her, um, hey, like you know what, I, I got off the phone with my stepdad and he told me that it's just gonna be easier if you just send me a check if you don't wanna go through insurance, that's the way we're gonna have to go about this. Um, the insurance company will just write me a check anyway, so it's no big deal in terms of like you you don't want to pay me so let me know what you'd like to do and so I give her like the whole day she said oh can I text you tomorrow I said okay the entire day passes by the next day it's like 8 o'clock at night and I still had no text from her so I texted her and this is where the shit really hits the fan and I have all the messages to fucking prove it so I texted her at 5 30 and I said hi what's happening no response 8.20, I texted her, I said, I need an answer. And this is what this bitch says. Are you ready? Oh, she goes, both parties agreed at the time of accident that there was no damage to any vehicle. Now you're claiming the accident did cause damage and got an estimate of $610 for the repairs. Not true. How would I know the damage you assess is a direct result of the accident in which my vehicle was involved? Not only that, you asked that a check be mailed in your name to a home address before any work was done. Obviously. When you were told the payment would be only made directly to the body shop or you when you provided a proof of receipt, you added an additional cost of car rental that would be a week to a week and a half during repairs. I added. You agreed to meet at the body shop where they would be paid for any damage you say my vehicle has caused and inquire about a car rental for you. However, you canceled and insisted the money be sent to you at a home address you previously provided or deal with insurance carriers. Now this part gets me, this last part. Ready guys? Ready? Like sit down. Are you sitting down? Because you need to. Fraud and misrepresentation is against the law. The California Code 484, California Civil Section Code 1572. In spirit of good faith, I'm willing to offer to pay you $200 directly for damages you say my vehicle has caused and $150 for two days of a car rental service for a total of $350. If you do not accept this offer, I would prefer to speak to your insurance carrier or lawyer. Thank you. Oh my god. I'm like getting lightheaded. This bitch is saying that I'm committing fraud and I'm misrepresenting my situation and that she would like to speak to my insurance carrier or my lawyer when the bitch's husband rear-ended me. I proceeded. And I said, first of all, there was no agreement of no damage to my car from my end. If that was the case, I would never have your husband's insurance information, nor would we be having this conversation. You were also not there, which is interesting how you can attest to me making a statement. Secondly, of course I asked for payment before any work was done. How could I know you were going to go through with payment after my car was fixed? That's being smart on my end. I, quote, added... Additional cost of a rental car after I called and asked how long the repairs would take, which was estimated to a week to a week and a half. I asked that the money be sent to me because you didn't want to go through insurance. I gave you the chance to make things easier on you and to save you money in the long run insurance wise. You can send me all the law inserts you want. It doesn't scare me because legally and morally I'm doing nothing wrong. I'm simply making sure my car is fixed after your husband caused damage. So have it your way. I'll be in touch with your insurance company in the morning. Bless you. So, I figured that she just tried to pull one over on me because her husband probably thought I was young, which I am, and that I was stupid, which bitch isn't that dumb, and thought that they could just get away with like not going through insurance and paying me like literally half of what I was estimated. Um, she never replied to that. I went to insurance in the morning, had an estimate of my car, they gave me a check for $500 for my bumper and $200 for my stress, anxiety, and missing work. So it worked out way better in my favor. I didn't commit fraud like that dumbass insinuated. Um, but yeah, I'm like, I can't even believe the shit that happens to me. Anyways, like, I'm happy that I went through insurance. From this point on, I will never not go through insurance 
when I get in a car accident and you shouldn't either because it just works out way better in the end and it's not as much of a headache. Wish I would have just done that from the beginning like my grandparents were telling me but stubborn ass bitch who thinks she knows it all right. But yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this crazy fucking story time. What do you guys think? Comment down below and please 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 don't forget to subscribe and comment what you guys want to see down below and other than that I will see you in my next one. Bye guys!